I haven't told this story before. Okay. Uh, I think as most guys do, we keep it to ourselves. And, you know, there's a few people even in our family that might know that we're struggling with this. It was quite a journey and to, to, to try to start from the beginning and go through it all. I had pretty nice hair, long hair. Uh, I'm a musician, uh, a front man in a band, and that really, I kind of connected with that and that was part of my identity. That was probably the biggest struggle for me was I felt that my hair was a part of my identity, my style, because I'm so passionate about music. Being up on stage, being in, you know, the spotlight for a concert, of course you want to put on a show and you want to look good and you want to play good. and that just helps the vibe of the night and everyone's going to have a good time. So me starting to lose that felt like I was starting to lose a part of myself, which was really intense. I struggled with that for years. My father's bald and my grandfather's bald. And I believe I have my grandfather's hairline just because of the way my balding is. It's like I got a patch up here and then it's really thin in here. And then kind of the cul-de-sac classic male pattern baldness thing going on and I saw them and I never really thought about it until I was sitting on the steps one day and my dad came out from behind me and said oh you're really thinning out and I was about 23 years old I'm 28 now it's yeah that's probably about a five year getting worse and worse and worse and trying to accept it slash hide it slash not accept it <laughs> you know yeah. the main thing for me was just I wanted to have long hair. Going out and everything, that would be one of the first things someone would say to me is, wow, your hair is so beautiful. And, you know, girls too, hey, you have better hair than me, you know? And it was just kind of an icebreaker right off the bat. And uh, yeah, it just was a self-esteem booster too. It was almost like just that one extra thing that I had. And I didn't really realize until I started to lose it how much I kind of cared about it really. All my idols, in the music world have hair and long hair and stuff like that. So to be detached from that felt like I was almost detached from my, I was not on the same playing level, which is so weird to think about now, but that was just the reality of where my mindset was. I just remember kind of noticing a spot in the back. Actually, there was one particular time at a party. It was like a birthday party or something with a bunch of friends in the scene. And uh, someone had mentioned that I'm going to lose my hair. And so that was interesting to me because I didn't see it from the front, but they must have seen it from the back, right? Mm -hmm. There was that. And then just noticing uh, when I would wash my hair, brush my hair, especially lots of hair would come out. It just seemed like way too much to me. Like sometimes it was handfuls and it was pretty quick. So I looked into like hair transplants and yeah, yeah. You know, that was kind of that, that was kind of later on actually I started researching right like what what affects uh, male pattern baldness and stuff like that and I would say the first half of my 20s was extremely stressful for me too so every single list mentioned stress and I was going through quite a bit and so it was like what do I do about this I don't feel like I can do anything about this that started happening more hair loss and starting to notice this kind of receding back and um, I kind of said to myself, because um, I have this, uh, I'll show you my bald head here. <laughs> yeah, man, we'll show I have this, this scar right here. I don't know if you can see it. So what I said to myself was, okay, I would look at other guys who were balding on stage, like who are a little older than me, and where I could tell like, hey, that looks kind of, you know, it's quite thin and it just, it's not really flowing, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, for lack of better words. So and I started noticing it was receding right here. So I said to myself, if it recedes back to this scar, I'm done. Okay. You know? So I, I kept watching this kind of thing, like oh, over the years, start getting little, closer. And I kept checking, mark. right? Yeah, it was weird. Yeah. It was like a benchmark yeah. that I gave myself because I'm holding on to this sort of hope right. that it's not going to be me, like you mentioned. And I started thinking to myself, because I was single at that time, I started thinking to myself, like, there's no way that someone's going to think I'm attractive if I go bald at, you know, 24, 25. So I threw on a hat and I rocked the hat for a long time, like uh, okay, up until, yeah. up until basically I shaved my head. So that was probably like three years of wearing a hat. Yeah. For a while I could get away with tying my hair back into a bun and yeah. just kind of covering up the spot back here. Right. But then, then in here started getting super thin. It got to the point where it, it was like strands and I just, uh, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't hide it with that anymore. So it was just hat dude anytime, even in the house, if I was going for coffee or something like that, then they would, you know, throw in a hat or a toque even, and 
and just this whole thing. So there was a few occasions where it's like, okay, you can't wear a hat. Yeah. So what do you do? So I got the, the fibers. Right. Um, that seemed to help, but it was not, yeah, not, uh, I don't know. It was always something I was thinking about in my hair too. Yeah. Um, just like, is anyone going to notice I'm, I have these fibers, you know, and then before I know it, I'm like pouring a whole bunch on and I'm trying to fill in all the spots and then like, before I can go out anywhere and just doing that to try to feel confident just didn't really resonate with me. Yeah. So I was single and I pretty much was rocking the hat and I ended up meeting this girl who was, um, you know, beautiful and amazing at the time and all this. And, um, I would rock the hat and, you know, it was nice because there was a point in our relationship, like where she said she didn't care about that. And so I felt safe. That was a huge thing. I remember just feeling like this, huge doom and gloom like I was never going to get a girlfriend if I lose my hair like I'm just going to be a bald guy and uh you know I didn't want to be a bald guy that was kind of the thing in my head can you remember how you navigated the whole oh I'm actually losing my hair thing with with that girl I just wore the hat as much as possible even in you know it's so embarrassing but even like when we were getting intimate for some of the first times yeah I'd be in the bed with my hat on you know, yeah. I just didn't want to take it off until, uh, you know, either the lights would turn off or I was, I was facing a certain way. And I just remember thinking about that often, like it was, it was, you know, super terrible, really, honestly, to not be in the moment and be conscious about something like that. And then it was kind of obvious, right? There I am wearing this hat inside, you know, in bed for no reason, right? So I think she just kind of helped me feel a little more comfortable about that. And slowly I just started to take it off and she started to talk to me about it and say, hey, like, I don't, I don't care. You know, I think you'd be attractive bald, actually. When I heard those words, I didn't believe it. I didn't think that, I think she was just trying to, you know, make me feel better. I think I just convinced myself that there's no way. Once we kind of broke past that point, she just said, hey, I don't care. And then I was able to walk around without around her in the house without a hat on. But as soon as any any company came over or anything like that, there was no way. Right. It, it was like, I need my hat. So me playing gigs and stuff like that, concerts started coming back. Um, so my band, we had a return gig, which is actually a year ago yesterday. And I wore a hat on stage, right? And I remember some people asked me, hey, why, why are you wearing a hat on stage? I just kind of brushed it off like, you know, I don't know, you know, whatever. And then some people asked my girlfriend um, at the time what, why I was wearing a hat on stage. So um, we actually filmed that night, like had a whole film crew there. In the video, you can see the split of hair where mm -hmm. it's, you can tell it's starting to thin but I got the flow going, right? Like you mentioned. Yeah. So even then, and then I did a full tour uh, with a hat on just every night, the same hat. And so I was hat guy, basically. Did you, did you feel the pressure of that build or? or yeah, I, I did. And I felt it was, it got like, I was getting questions and even from my own bandmates, like we were having a meeting right before we were about to hit the stage. And one of my bandmates just said, hey, like, maybe you should lose the hat. And that was, I felt instant pressure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I just opened up a little bit and I said, ah, oh, I have a little spot that I'm con self-conscious about. That's yeah. how I, I said it. And then they said, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so I felt like I slowly started to kind of open up about it a little bit. And when, when I felt extreme pressure and eventually I just couldn't rock the flow anymore because even my girlfriend would say like, it's beyond that. Now I feel like it's totally obvious with your hat, you know, that you only have a little bit of hair hanging out. So then I resorted to the man bun with the hat and that kind of made it look like I always had my hair tied up. Right. So that was um, consistent for like six, seven months, just this man bun with a hat. You know, I went through this phase where it was kind of like neglecting my hair. It was just in this man bun, even when I would sleep. So it was just getting 
kind of matted, like naughty and just terrible. So even I just, I wasn't, my way of, I guess, dealing with it along with all the other stuff in life was just kind of, you know, throw the hat on, have the man bun. That's how I am now for now at every show or anytime I go somewhere and, you know, maybe put a hood up and just total facade, like you said, just hiding. That hair loss was traumatic and it, it got to the point where I was neglecting it. And uh, yeah, I remember just, just feeling so shitty about it. Yeah, like, you know, I didn't want to have people over, to sleep over, like buddies or, you know, go. I would think about it if I was going over to someone's house and sleeping over, like, you know, staying on their couch or something like that. Like, are they going to, you know, see the back of my head or it's completely bald? So I would plan like, you know, which hats I'm going to bring, you know. And on a, head. Know, a certain sweater with a hood so that I could throw it up. And there's just a lot of effort for, you know, nothing really. The medication I wasn't too keen on. I'm not someone who takes medication unless I really have to. Then it was a question of, okay, looking into really high quality wigs. You know, the ones where they shave your head and they put a paste on and they can last a couple, like a couple weeks to a month. And then you got to go back in and do it again. Other, other types, you know, and it was getting serious about the wigs, like spending, you know, three to $5,000 even on a, on a wig. Um, Because I just, like I said, I knew that I didn't want to be on stage headbanging without my hair. And that's truly how I felt because I've seen that and then I've seen what it looks like with Mm -hmm. hair. And I wanted the other option. I wanted to keep that identity. And I was so attached to that. And trying to explain that to my girlfriend at the time and her mom, they they took a while to kind of understand that. There's tons of guys who are bald that are up there like Tom Morello of Rage Against the Machine. Mm -hmm. And, you know, lots of bald guys who do their thing and all that. So that was helpful, but it was this journey of searching through wigs and what kind of options and how that would even go. Would I walk into the venue and, you know, my closest friends be like, your hair looks a little different. What's going on? You know? Mm-hmm. And then there's this whole thing of like, Oh, I'm going to have to have a story or I'm going to have to make sure that looks perfect, you know, and make sure it doesn't fall off or, make sure that yeah it's in prime condition so that no one ever notices so it's basically i realized that's the same thing that i'm dealing with right now except i'm spending thousands of dollars to keep it up and how long is that gonna you know am i gonna meet somebody and you know all of a sudden i take my wig off and they're like whoa you know it's like it's like removing the makeup you know kind of thing once that kind of fizzled and my hair had gotten to a point where I just couldn't do anything with it anymore. It was constant man bun with the hat. Um, I felt as if the time was about to come. And like I said, I was neglecting it hardcore. I was going through a breakup and a move and all this change in my life very recently, the last three months. And there was this kind of thing that was just sitting there. And it was almost like this unnecessary weight when I was trying to move forward. It was like this kind of thing that was holding me back. And so I kind of started to realize that and feel that and it started getting frustrating. I'm a welder, so I wear a hard hat often. And, uh, you know, just trying to adjust the hard hat so my man bun, you know, sits right. And just all these little things that you deal with day to day. And, you know, sometimes, you know, when you put on your hat, you got to adjust your man bun a little bit, you know what I mean? So yeah, it started getting more frustrating and I couldn't walk down the hallway without reaching for a hat first or go to the gym or, you know, and, and, and part of my move was looking for, you know, beds and stuff like that. So I go into a mattress place and they're like, oh, you can lay down and try this pillow. And there I am laying down with this hat. And yeah. It's just like, afterwards you think about it and you're like, man, I must, kinda, I, I must look ridiculous or you just feel ridiculous. Like, yeah. I got to the point and uh, where I was so frustrated. I remember I was in the shower and I just was going like this, washing my hair and I just could feel barely anything here. And then it was all here. And I just said, ah, I got out of the shower, grabbed my razor and I just went at my hair like half halfway. And I just cut half my hair off. I went back in the shower and, you know, I could only do half. 
It was so wow. weird. Yeah. Yeah. I felt like, okay, well, maybe it'll look good if it's a shorter, you know, somehow it'll be sh like shoulder length. And so I got out of the shower and dried it and kind of tried to convince myself that, yeah, it doesn't look too bad. On goes the hat. Oh yeah, that doesn't look too bad. Does it still work in a man bun? Oh yeah, it does. Back to the man bun. Right. <laughs> you know? So then I, I go to work and I work in the Arctic Circle. So I'm in a camp and I knew I had, I charged up my razor fully because I knew that I might make a decision. So I made sure my razor was fully charged and I brought it up there and it was about two days in and, uh, you know, I just, and then I made the video. The bit that sticks out for me is, is when the frustration builds, because as you described, like literally every single, literally like almost every single um, thing in your life at that point is being affected by this at this point. I think that is the point you get to where you, you're forced to almost like take a step back. And you said like, I must look ridiculous or I feel ridiculous. And you get that when you kind of like detach yourself from like being all up here worrying. And you know what I mean? It's like when it gets so, you take a step back and you're like, hang on a minute. Like what is actually going on here? Right. Keep going. So you, you're off to work. Right. And you're two days in the, the, the razor's charged. Yeah, the razor, <laughs> the razor is fully charged. And, uh, you know, I was like, what am I going to look like bald? But God damn it, it cannot look worse than this. And I just knew that uh, with all the change that's going on in my life right now, uh, moving into a new place, there's so much going on. I felt all of a sudden it was like a change of mindset. Like, oh, I'm basically transitioning to this new person that I want to be. Uh, it made me feel like I needed to shed this to move on. It was almost like a physical act that is going to start this for real, this mindset, this whole yeah. change of, you know, the things that I want to become. It's like go time, basically. I remember just kind of laying on my bed and just like, I think I watched one of your, one of your videos and uh, I realized, man, I got to do it. I just took off my hat and looked at my hair and it looked terrible and I'd worked all day and it was just like super thin in here. You know, I felt this nervousness. So fire up the razor. I made that video and I'm glad I did because uh, hopefully it can help somebody or, and then I just started going and I remember getting halfway through thinking like there's, you know, starting to reveal my, my head shape because that's a major concern. I think for a lot of people is, you know, am, am I going to have an attractive head shape? So it was that kind of thing. And then it started to reveal. And once I got it pretty much all off, I kind of looked in the mirror and I was like, oh, you know, I, I started smiling and feeling this whole burst of almost relief. And I just couldn't help but laugh and smile. And, and it was like a self-acceptance moment where it's like, ah, that doesn't look too bad. Wow. Yeah. It was like this, this cool feeling that, and I still get it through the last week. You know, when I see myself in the mirror, um, I, I get that little jolt of like, you know, this is the new me. It's, it's not that bad, actually. It's not as bad as I thought it would be. I feel like my confidence has all of a sudden gone up where I can start focusing on other things. And it's crazy to realize how much energy and concentration that I put into, uh, you know, something I just didn't have control over anymore. Something that, you know, I could have accepted a few years ago and, and just gone on with my life. Are there things that now you can kind of look back on and say like, yeah, okay, that, that really did help. Things that helped you get to the point where you are now that, that's, that stick out for you that other people can maybe implement or think about doing that can help them, do you think? Realizing that, that's not going to hold you back from what you want to do. You know, I look up to other people. I think a lot of people look up to a lot of other people, but you know, I'm, I'm on a journey of trying to find my potential and, and my purpose. So I'm really trying to do that. And I, I guess, I guess I kind of attached these things that I had that kind of gave me that validation, but I don't think it's things that you have. I think it's what you are and what you create. And I think that is something that you could, really think about if you if you can it's not about the things that you have on your body it's about who you are and what you choose to bring out in the world that way but what you do that way is what's really going to matter in the long term this whole kind of idea of holding on to these things that make us is just such 
an enormous amount of energy throughout our day. And I feel like if you can just get to the point with yourself where you turn that energy and that focus on making changes or, you know, focusing on what's within, then you will be more equipped to handle the hard times and the struggles in the future, you know, legitimately. Yeah. Because th- that's where you're going to have all that strength, not in the things that you will lose eventually. Yeah, yeah, definitely. The, the hair wouldn't have um, allowed you to get through those tough times, right? You don't kind of draw no. the strength of fading hair. It doesn't have much power, right, to help us, yeah. I think what really helped me with that was just having a community of people going on YouTube and, and finding your community was huge for me. I didn't know that that existed. And, you know, I would go on Google and say, like, do women find men who are bald attractive? You know, the classic questions that we ask or what's an attractive head shape or, you know, what is the average age to go bald? Am I not average? Am I too young kind of thing? But then going on YouTube and finding this community of dudes who are obviously struggling obviously young old have insecurities and all this kind of stuff that you is like real life stuff it was kind of like this thing where it's like you know i'm not the only one yeah and and watching that you just kind of root for the guy you're like man just just accept it come on man like you're gonna look great so after watching a bunch of videos and stuff it's like you kind of hopefully you can tell yourself that and say hey you're gonna be good you're gonna be okay Unfortunately, it does take time, but if there's anything I can say to help speed that up so that you can just move on, that's what I would say.